Have you ever felt like you're just not the right person for the job? Like you can't live up to the expectations around you? We've all been there, I'm sure. But what if stories like Yoas occurs in Shaman King and the words of Jesus could help us not just feel like we're right for the job, but actually perfect for what we've been called to do? Let's talk about it. Folks, welcome to Checkpoint Church, where nerds, geeks, and gamers come together to talk about faith, games, and voluntary spiritual possession. I am your nerd pastor, Nate. If you like these weekly deep dives, be sure to sub, hit that bell, and find out when our next one drops. As always, folks, we're going to be starting with our scripture. This time we're reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. As always, I'll be reading from the NRSV. That's my preferred translation. It's what's going to be on the screen. If you have something you prefer, feel free to use that as well. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. So first and foremost, what is Shaman King? Well, Shaman King is one of the latest new anime from Netflix, but it's actually been one of my favorites since I was in elementary school. It's a Japanese manga series written and illustrated by Hiroyuki Takei. And the plot of Shaman King revolves around Yo Asakura, our main character and protagonist, who is a shaman and a medium between the worlds of the living and the dead. Yo seeks to become the Shaman King. This is the one who is able to contact with the Great Spirit and gain the ability to reshape the world in any way that they wish. And for this purpose, he must win the shaman fight, a battle that only happens every 500 years between competing shamans. For the most part, the show kind of reiterates the power of friendship, as most anime do, but the truth of the show is that it's a bit more specific than that. So first, a precursor. In the UMC, we don't accept predestination as a theological fact, but this show presents some interesting concepts around the theme of fated truth. Yo is supposedly destined to be the shaman king from birth, as the kind of weird creepy baby scene from the beginning shows us. Despite the show building itself as a tournament-style fight between all of these awesome shaman and their spirits, the truth is that the fated reality is only between two real forces, good and evil. Good is represented in the form of the lackadaisical Yo Asakura, and pure evil is presented in the form of his twin Hao that we meet at the end of season one. Oh, was that a spoiler alert? Did you know that the gross Akira baby from the beginning was Hal? Whatever. The anime is literally 20 years old, and it's still good even with that mild spoiler. I mean, they are like literally identical. I don't feel like I was spoiling too much. Now, this story of pure good versus pure evil is pretty common. It's kind of the main thing that the entire Star Wars franchise rests its laurels upon. What I think is interesting about Shaman King is that the entire responsibility of the fight rests quite literally on two individuals. Yes, the power of friendship does help in the end. Of course, this is a shonen after all. But at the end of it all, it has to be Yo and it has to be Hal. Now, this is really pretty standard up until this point, and it cements our story into the trope that critics like to call the unlikely hero. Yo is the layabout, predestined hero of everything, who just wants to listen to good music and enjoy a nice laid-back life. This makes him far from the obvious choice to be the hero, but he has to be because reasons. What I think makes this interesting is that most mangaka make the choice to take this trope and have the main character fight against it. Think of the protagonist Merc, who tries to escape their responsibility by living a life on the land. Yusuke Yurameshi, basically. Or the mangaka takes it a second direction, where the fated hero is seen as the definitive hero by everyone and is placed with that expectation upon them. Think of Link from Legend of Zelda. Everybody knows that that is the hero. Despite a slight identity crisis when Yo first loses while being distracted by Manta, Yo never really questions his role as the destined hero. He doesn't really even talk about it. But make no mistake, Yo knows his importance in the story. When most characters say they're going to be Shaman King, they're making bold declarations. Yo is making a humble statement of reality. 
because of this humility, Yo also doesn't exactly live up to the Link role either. He isn't seen as the obvious hero, or he doesn't go about bragging about his allotment as the hero. Instead, he ends up proving over and over and over again that he is worthy of the respect of his friends without ever forcing the issue. In this way, Yo actually reminds me uh, like a lot of Jesus. Hopefully this doesn't get me labeled as a heretic. Am I allowed to say that a Japanese Shinto writer with ties to Native American shamanism is similar to the Jewish rabbi Godman who started Christianity? Eh, YOLO. In our scripture, we see a pretty intriguing encounter between Jesus and the disciples, with particular attention to Simon Peter. Jesus asks a few questions, and mind you, they've been traveling together for a while at this point. Jesus' ministry is out in the open. Jesus asks, who do the general people say that the Son of God is, or that I am? What are you hearing about me? What's the soup? Give me the dish. The disciples dish out a few random things they're hearing on the street. Some say you're the reincarnation of these ancient leaders from our history books. And then Jesus asks a tough one. And what about you? Who do you say that I am? With this, Simon Peter steps up and gives his bold declaration. He's got this all figured out. He says, Jesus, you are the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. He doesn't bat an eye and he doesn't miss a beat. With this, Jesus is well pleased and declares that Peter didn't figure that out on his own merit, but by the Father revealing it to him. It's a supernatural realization. Because of this, says Jesus, Peter will be the founder of the church, the rock which the church will be built upon. And... Lo and behold, St. Peter is the rock of the early church, the saint which the church is built upon. So, was this predestination? Not really, right? I mean, it could be argued, but what's actually happening here? Is Peter perfect? No. Peter's going to deny Jesus soon. Three times! Peter's going to mess up again and again and again. Peter will fight directly against God about letting Gentiles into the grace of Jesus. Peter is not the ideal candidate by any means. But for what it's worth, Peter did become the rock of the church that Jesus said he would become. Why? Well, the secret, I believe, is the last weird sentence of our passage. After Jesus gives this big proclamation, he basically says, shh, it's a secret to everybody, and tells them to not tell anyone who he is. Why would Jesus say that? Let me be clear. If I found out that someone I knew was the savior of humankind, I would be shouting that mess from the rooftop. So why? I think that both of these messages are tied together because of the truth behind the unlikely hero. The trope of the unlikely hero is rooted in one central idea. The story will not work if the final piece of the puzzle is not met. So what is the central piece? Ownership. Naming it and claiming it. That is what sets Peter apart. That's what sets Yo apart. That's what sets Jesus apart. And that's what sets the Christian apart. Yo knows from birth that he is the representation of good. He's it. He's all the world's got. That is a lot of pressure and honestly, pretty worthy of bragging about. But instead, Yo owns it, accepts it, and moves forward. He doesn't insist that anyone else go along with it. He doesn't get braggadocious or demand special treatment. In the words of Jesus, don't tell anyone that I'm the only actual choice. Even Manta, Yo's best friend, doesn't really get it at first, which Anna, waifu for laifu, by the way, I was like seven when I met her, so it's not weird. Shut up, it's not weird. Even Anna tells Manta that Yo will be the Shaman King. That's all there is to it, and he just can't wrap his mind around it time and time again throughout our story. Anna, like Peter, gets it. She owns it, accepts it, and doesn't brag about it or treat Yo differently because of it. That's why they've been engaged since they were like five or whatever. They're married by the ownership of this reality. You know, kind of like Jesus and his bride, the church, of which Peter is the rock. It's a little bit on the nose here, folks. So what does this actually mean for us today? Well, with stories like Shaman King, we're begged the question of what that level of ownership looks like currently. Sometimes we feel like we're a bad fit for the job to which we're called. Believe me, whenever I first got the call to pastoral ministry, I was like, dude, I don't even like hymns. How am I going to do this thing? But I owned it, and now look, I'm the pastor of a church on Twitch. Was it predestined? I don't think so. But I've owned it and lived into it to the point that I'm doing exactly what I feel called to do. It doesn't have to be a pastoral ministry for you, but odds are you're feeling called, drawn, or built for something in particular. Your head and your heart may be at war with one another. But Yo Asakura and Jesus and Peter remind us that all it really takes is an open mind, an open heart, and a humble approach to live into our lives in the fullest way that we possibly can. So, whether you're feeling unfulfilled or overwhelmed, the truth of Jesus is that we are exactly who we should be. And the hardest part of doing this thing called life is just saying yes and owning where we're headed. 
So whether you're the epitome of pure good, the doofy and bizarrely small best friend, or some other wacky character in this thing called life, you are welcome at Checkpoint Church as you figure out what the next step is for you. But if you're Faust, please stay at least five feet away from me at all times. Okay, thanks. Bye. Folks, thank you so much for watching this video. I so appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch these nerdy deep dives. If you want to hear more about Shaman King, I have great news for you. I actually wrote an article for Rethink UMC that will be down in the description down below. If you just want more of what we're doing at Checkpoint Church, we are streaming every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday over on twitch.tv backslash Checkpoint Church. Now, I'm pretty sure you just wrote a Taylor Swift song. Are you aware that you just write a Taylor Swift song? Did you do it on purpose? If you want to be a part of this thing every day, go over and join our Discord where we're hanging out, getting to know one another, and doing some awesome stuff together. Oh, hey, quick question for you. What historical figure would be your ideal spirit ally like Amit Amaru? I personally think it'd be pretty awesome to have like Muhammad Ali or some kind of awesome fighter. I think that'd be pretty dope. With that, folks, that's all the time we have for this video. So as always, these three things we believe to be true about every single one of you, regardless of where you are with God, whether you believe in God or not, whether you go to church or not, we believe these three things to be absolutely true about every single one of you. Number one, we believe that God loves you, like really, really loves you. Number two, because of that love, we love you. We want community with you. And number three, we believe that you, yes, you out there, you matter. You are of sacred worth. The world is better. Why? Because you're in it. Folks, with that, have a wonderful rest of your day. I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. And until next time, bye-bye! I was going 85 down the freeway, all windows down, and homeboy was sitting on the window, still just chilling, looking at me, teasing me. Now, I'm pretty sure you just wrote a Taylor Swift song. Are you aware that you just wrote a Taylor Swift song? Did you do it on purpose? The Fly That Is is the title. The Fly That Is is the title of that Taylor Swift song on her next folk album. I was going 85 down the freeway, all windows down, and homeboy was sitting on the window still just chilling, looking at me and teasing me. He's the fly that is. The fly that is.